Right. So just wanted us to, you know, um, just pray on those lines. Just ask the Lord, even as we study that the Lord is um, the one who sanctifies and, and all the work that we see, right, the, what he does in the life of a believer, you know, it's for you, it's for me, right? We see in scripture, this is what he does. Um, just like, you know, how we look at the supernatural works of the Lord Jesus, the way he ministered, um, we see that. And the Lord says, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works, right? So which means it's you and I. So the best thing to do when we come across that, you know, that's a scripture like that. And when we look at the life of the Lord Jesus, the way he ministered, the best thing to do is to say, Lord, you know, thank you that you've called me to this. Thank you that you've called me to minister in this. Thank you that you've called me to be a blessing in people, right? So, so that is agreeing with, with God. When we agree with his word, we agree with God himself right? because we are agreeing with what he says. Right? We are continuing to you know, engaging our heart and we're saying, Lord, I, I believe that. Right? And, uh, and whatever we have problems with, you know, challenges uh, with believing, we're saying, God, you know, it seems too, too wonderful. It seems too impossible. You know, how is this even possible? You know, ask the Lord for, ask the Holy Spirit for more revelation. Ask the Lord and he will testify about Jesus. He will witness, he will testify and he will lift up uh, the name of Jesus, exalt Jesus, um, so it's all plain and clear, and he will give us the understanding. Right? And um, one of the prayers, I, I think, there, of course, there are many prayers that we can pray, uh, but one of the prayers that we uh, see in, in Paul's episodes to, um, I think to Ephesians, and we see that, and that's something that we can pray over ourselves and pray and declare over ourselves, right? Where... Um, uh, he's. This is what he, you know, prays over the efficient, uh, the the believers in Ephesus, right? Ephesians chapter one, and uh, this is what he says. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So, you know, we can just pray this over ourselves and, and say, Lord, I just pray that uh, I want to give thanks to you, and uh, I pray that um, that uh, I just want to give thanks that you've given me um, the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of revelation and wisdom, and that you will uh, give me revelation and wisdom in the knowledge, uh, in the knowledge of Jesus, in the knowledge of God, and uh, you know that, and pray and say, Lord, the eyes of my understanding may be open, may be enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of your calling, that I may know what is the hope of your calling, and the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power? Lord, may I know this, um, the greatness of your power towards me, towards us who believe, and according to the working of your mighty power, which you worked in Christ. So, you know, this is a great prayer to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal okay, he's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so as we, uh, as we learn these things, you know, just pray and engage with God, agree with God, acknowledge and declare that, uh, you know, this is so in my life, right? Um, so that's, um, that's, you know, walking closely with him, right? Okay, so last class, we, um, we were looking at um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer and uh, in everyday life of a believer. And we looked at several things, right? We looked at in uh, in, in, with regards to holiness and sanctification, you know, bringing a believer uh, from various things that a believer is held by, right? You and I are held by um, to 
that work of sanctification. He does the work of sanctification, right? Uh, what does it mean, the work of separation from the world, the work of separation from the works of darkness, the work of separation from uh, the things of the flesh, right? So we saw that he, uh, he helps us to crucify the flesh, bring to, put to death the deeds of the body. And he helps us, and uh, and huge portions of scripture, you know, Galatians, uh, uh, and also Galatians chapter five, Galatians six, Romans uh, six, seven, and eight uh, talks about that the work of the Spirit in our lives, right? And uh, and we also looked at how he is the one who sanctifies, he's the one who does the work of sanctification, which means that he helps us, he gives us the understanding, he helps us, empowers us to sanctify ourselves, set us. Um, uh, set ourselves apart, make those choices to separate ourselves right from the things of the world, from the works of the flesh, and so on. We also saw, saw that he abides in us, right? just like the Lord Jesus said, he said that I will give you, he will, um, I will give you another comforter, he will come, he will, uh, he will abide with you forever, he will stay with you forever. And 1 Corinthians 3 and, uh, and also 1 Corinthians 6 talks about how collectively and personally, uh, individually, that the Holy Spirit, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. So he stays with us. He abides with us. And what an awesome privilege to have this God of creation, to have the one who, uh, uh, one who uh, did these miracles and continues to do these supernatural continues to do this work of refining, to have him dwell in us, to have him stay with us, right? What an awesome privilege, right? He also transforms us into uh, Christ-likeness, to be like Christ, okay? So that's, you might think, okay, that seems to be a tall order. You know, I know, I read about Jesus, I see how he was and how he lived. And, uh, you know, so how is it even possible, right? But scripture says, 2 Second, Second Corinthians 3 and verse 18 says that um, we are being transformed into his likeness, right? Whose likeness? 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, no, no, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Okay, so that's the first thing we are seeing. We are beholding as we look in a mirror. We are, what are we looking at? Uh, the well, the well, the unveiled face. You know, uh, we have that veil has been taken away. Whatever was hiding us, whatever was, um, you know, preventing us from having a clear picture of who Jesus was, and and you know that that is taken away because we turn to the Lord, and we see clearly the glory of the Lord. What is the glory of God? What is the doxa of the Lord? It is who God is, right? As a person, who he who he is, and what he does. What are the works of God? So we see very clearly. We clear, clearly see the doxa of God, and when we see that, when we behold the glory of God, we are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord, which means that by the Spirit of the Lord, by the work of the Spirit, you know, we, we behold the glory of God. We, he takes us, He shows us the glory of God, who, who He is and, and what He does. And it doesn't stop there. There is transformation. Right? We behold the glory of God, and we are being transformed into that same image. Right? So... So that's the thing, you know, that's the beautiful thing of being in the presence of God, worshiping the Lord, being in his presence, being in the presence of, um, you know, in the, of the Holy Spirit, that we are being changed. We are being transformed, like metamorpho, which means that it's a drastic change. And sometimes the change is un unbelievable. Sometimes we, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to, unbelievable to us, unbelievable to, uh, to others around us. And there is steady change happening from one level of glory to another level of glory. Okay. Change from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord, by the spirit of God. So this is what happens that we are being changed to be like Christ. 
okay um to be like christ uh, with regard to character to be like christ you know just like efficiency um, the 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 portion that we read talked about that that we will come to know the power of the spirit the work of the spirit right the same holy spirit who raised up christ from the dead that we might know the power the eyes of our understanding be being open that we might know the greatness of his power okay so so that's the beautiful thing that we don't have to shy away from you know the just like we don't shy away from being like right we, we pray and we ask i want to be like you and i want to be changed to be like i want to be transformed to be like you the same way he opens our eyes so that we come and have that understanding of the power of god right so when it when it says transformation transformation in all aspects right there is change we get to know and understand the power of god we get to experience the power of god we get to minister in the power of god right so there's transformation happening and that's by the holy spirit praise god right then the revelatory work of the spirit okay so now this is again um something that's wonderful so we need to have fellowship with the holy spirit we need to have those conversations with the holy spirit we need to be dependent on the holy spirit why you know we look at these scriptures um first one is uh second corinthians chapter first sorry first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 to 16 the first corinthians 2 where it says that um the eye has not seen okay as it is written i has not seen nor you heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him okay but the next verse is uh, even more wonderful says yes, but god has revealed them to us how through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ okay so uh, several things we see here um is uh, actually paul talks about wisdom you know he uh, the beginning of the chapter he talks about you know how he came and how he um uh, shared and uh, preached to the um, believers that they might have their faith not in the wisdom of man but in the power of god okay so that's how he uh, he starts this uh, whole um, this i mean this uh, this section right that your faith should be in the power of god and then he goes on to say talk about the holy spirit right so he says um i has not seen nor ear heard okay so i natural um or physical um organs of perception right physical organs of perception or this is how we get our information um Uh, this is how we process information or receive information from the outside world or from the environment through our eyes through our ears right so here he says you know i has not seen nor you heard so you know physically we may not have seen it heard it nor have entered into the heart of man okay so there's no deep revelation in the spirit as well the things which god has prepared for those who love him but god revealed them to us through the spirit so the revelatory work okay to reveal the things that are hidden to reveal the mysteries right so he gives us a revelation and understanding god has revealed them it's like god saying okay you know have you seen this right shining light on it or highlighting something a text and saying have you seen this have you read this that god reveals them to us how through his 
spirit or by his spirit right so he knows the things of god he is omniscient he knows everything he is god so he reveals that to us by the spirit to our hearts okay through um, through the holy spirit verse 14 says that um, the natural man or you know natural man could mean uh, one well be a person who is unregenerate or not born again right um, natural the bible talks about natural man it talks about carnal man okay and of course a spiritual man as well so a natural man does not um, receive these things why because it is not there in that grid of understanding right they are foolishness he know them because they are spiritually discerned you know there, now there's a faculty of uh, the natural man which is he's not using because it's not come alive right his spirit is not born again and uh, his spirit does not engage or commune with the holy spirit because nor can he know them it talks about ability right nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned and um, but he who is spiritual is referring to a person who is who is spiritual who's inclined to the works of the spirit work of the spirit uh, he uh, it talks about you know judges all things and so on so because he is able to see things with a different perspective through the eyes of the spirit right there's an there's an added uh, a realm that is uh, that is part of his uh, perception which is the spirit you know, being taught by the spirit right so uh, so it's it's a wonderful thing that um, the holy spirit shows us teaches us verse 12 that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god okay so what are those things that have been freely given to us by god you know, by the grace of god the you know the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, you know the the gifts right gifts of the spirit they are freely they're not earned they are freely given to us um they they are, they are what what is called charis or works of grace or gifts of grace right they it is it is something that we cannot earn it is not because of performance it is unmerited right so the holy spirit gives us a knowledge of that understanding of that he also gives us you know understanding of who we are who we have become because uh, in romans we read um let me just read that word romans was Eight, sorry, chapter eight and verse fifteen. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, "Abba, Father." The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So there's a revelation of our identity. Hey, you are not a nobody, you are not an orphan, but you are a child of God. Right. So the Spirit of God does that. he gives the revelation he gives the revel he does the revelatory work and the free things you know the things that have been freely given to us by god he gives us an understanding of that right so it is critical that we as believers um develop this fellowship intentionally you know walk with the holy spirit otherwise we are missing out on this right and so the things that have been freely given to us by god our identity as children of god among you know other things that comes to us when we engage with the holy spirit when we fellowship with the holy spirit and he is the spirit of revelation right so uh, so that's something what else um, ephesians 1:17 that's i think uh, the verse that we just read that he would open our understanding with you know that the god uh, let me just read that again Ephesians one seventeen that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. The that the Father of glory may give to you revelation in the knowledge of Him. So, um. the knowledge of the most high god you know how does how does one uh, have access to it 
and the knowledge that the wisdom that comes from god how does that one access to it of course you know we are one in christ we are one spirit within but it to the work of the holy spirit right so as believers you know we grow we need to grow in our understanding of him we need to grow in our uh, knowledge and understanding of him and the holy spirit gives us and it says that uh, you know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints what is the hope of his calling right so when we uh, when our mind uh, when our understanding is enlightened which means that there's there's light that's light which is understanding which has come come in and which dispels the darkness of ignorance right so that that is just swept away maybe it's a darkness of even lies and deception or wrong understanding right of ourselves uh, understanding of our, of god or, of, or you know very low estimation of god sometimes you know and very low estimation of ourselves as children of god very low estimation of ourselves what we can do for you know uh, in the kingdom by his spirit very low estimation say okay I, i'm just going to go through life i'm just going to struggle i'm just going to do this and get by and get to heaven right all that ignorance is cleared away by the light of the understanding that comes from him the enlightened that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we may see right spiritually look into see and receive okay um he also gave this revelation to the apostles and the prophets ephesians 3 talks about that um if you go to um next uh, yeah uh, next couple of ch- chapters so 3 and then verse 5 um how that maybe from verse 3 how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery okay so paul is testifying saying he made known to me that mystery by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ so he's testifying you know this knowledge this understanding is by the spirit of god okay uh, it came by revelation it's not something that i you know i learned earlier as i was training to be a pharisee okay um in fact in if you turn to um, philippians right philippians 3 what does he say what things were gain to me these i have counted loss for christ okay and in that he talks about circum uh, verse 5 in you know, philippians 3 and verse 5 circumcised the eighth day of the stock of israel of the tribe of benjamin he talks about his background a hebrew of the hebrews concerning the law of pharisee you know about his uh, credentials about his training and all this and then he says what things were gain to me i have counted loss for christ indeed i also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that i may gain christ okay and uh, let's go back to ephesians 3 so he's saying you know how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery so is something something which is very very precious right he's saying that you know this is so precious that if else i count it count it worthless in fact uh, you know he says rubbish right? the the greek word used there is the word which you use for refuse or uh, excrete excretement or dung you know um to so use such a such strong language to say just to say that this is so precious i've been trained in the best of the best under the best uh, you know teachers but this which came by revelation of the holy spirit well this is so valuable i count the other things worthless right It says um uh, verse 5 which in the other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets and what was the understanding that gentiles the non jewish people should also be fellow heirs of the same body partakers of that promise in christ through the gospel okay so this this mystery that paul is writing about in fact you know peter testifies and he says you know uh, our, our brother 
our brother Paul, what he writes sometimes is very complex that people who, uh, you know, who don't understand it, they twist it and uh, they, they, they speak of things that they don't understand. Right? So, uh, but he testifies you know, that because of the revelation that has been given, he writes these things. So Peter himself testifies to Paul's writings, right? So the thing is that he received by revelation, by the work of the Spirit, what was revealed to the apostles and prophets as uh, as founding, um, you know, as founding ministers who laid down doctrine, um, the revelation, right? First uh, Peter one and uh, and eleven and. 12, 1 Peter 1, 11. Okay. Uh, again, of the same thing. You know, of this salvation, maybe uh, I'll just read from 10. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Okay, so he's talking about the prophets who, uh, who prophesied about this salvation through Christ, um, through the cross, um, they inquired and searched carefully, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed, not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which have now been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. I know that's a long sentence, but uh, but it just talks about how uh, the uh, early prophets and uh, prophets were inquiring and searching. And these things, which was, of course, which was revealed to them in part, the same has been revealed to us today in the preaching of the gospel by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Okay. Um, Second Peter one and verse twenty one. Right, uh, prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved or conveyed um, by the Holy Spirit. So you see that this revelation, uh, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding of His power, who He is, and everything, coming from the Holy Spirit and being revealed by the Holy Spirit to us. Okay, um, Hebrews 10 talks about um, how um, Hebrews 10 and verse uh, 14, you know, teaching us the things of God, just like how God reveals the things that have been freely given to us by God. Um, the Holy Spirit does that. Um, 14 and 15, right? For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said, uh, after he had said before, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. And then he says, you know, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So again, the work of the Spirit. The Spirit witnesses, and this is what He witnesses to our hearts, that what God already said, what already spoke, that, that His law, He will write, His word, He will write upon our hearts. Um, and in our minds, He will write them. Okay. And the Lord Jesus, uh, again, spoke about this, right? that He will teach, that He will remind Okay, his words, he will teach us and he will remind us. So um, he, de he does that. He teaches us um, the things of God. He reveals God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's understanding, right? So, um, yeah, so I know that we, all of us, we need um, the revelation from God. We need, um, you know, we need to grow in this. We need that. and 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 also the things that God has for us is plans and purposes and and uh, you know discovering that and walking in that. Um, you know, that's that's the life of the believer, right? It's an exciting, adventurous, joyful, joyous life of discovering and walking uh, uh, in His ways, right? and that has been given to us, and that has been made possible by the Holy Spirit. So you see, it's it's uh, it's amazing 
uh, you know, work the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, if you look at Ephesians 2, uh, verse 10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So there are good works. There are things that, the plans that God has, and uh, he wants them, he wants us to discover and walk in them. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us to help us to uh, discover, to, to reveal these things to us, um, that we might know those things that have been freely given to us by God, that we might have an understanding, that we might understand the greatness of his power, and the, uh, the power according to uh, the Holy Spirit who rose up, who raised up Christ from the dead, right? So these are things that are there for us. So again, just to encourage us to, you know, to spend time, to fellowship with, um, with God and uh, receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit right? Okay, right. Any, any questions? Anything that you... Uh, want to add to what uh, what was shared? Okay, nothing at all. Okay, let's move on then. Fine. So let's talk about prayer. Okay, uh, prayer we know is communication, communi communing with God, right? Talking to God, having Him speak to us. Uh, having uh, receiving instructions from him, revelation from him. Um, so, you know, that is one aspect of prayer. prayer. You draw near to God in prayer and uh, spend time in his presence. Uh, so there's, we, um, uh, or we, we increase in our intimacy, in our you know, closeness with him through prayer, right? That's uh, one aspect of it. The other thing is also that prayer is, prayer is warfare, uh, prayer is, uh, you know, when we declare and in prayer, prayer is also a spiritual act. It's a warfare by which we bring down the strongholds of the enemy. Um, so various aspects to prayer. Prayer is ministering, right, and different kinds of prayer. When we when we study, we uh, prayer of faith, prayer of uh, uh, intercession. You know, in in the aspect of ministry, like for others, um, uh, in addition to our personal needs as well. So. The Holy Spirit helps us, right, uh, with regard to prayer. The Holy Spirit helps us. Let's look at uh, some scriptures to understand how does this work, you know, how does he help us? Okay, let's look at Romans 8 again. Um, okay. Romans 8 and uh, verse 26. Okay. Romans 8, 26. Um, so it says that the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses okay the holy spirit helps us in our weaknesses okay so it, and it goes on to explain why how you know, how does he help it says here for well, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought okay uh, maybe it's in the understanding of the will of god okay now when we don't know what the will of god is then we uh, lack the under or lack the uh, faith to pray on those lines, right? So, I don't suppose you, you know, you you, you feel that okay, this uh, taking off in A or you know taking going to a place A is not the will of God, or you're not sure. Okay, then to pray on those lines, it's it's going to be difficult, right? So, so we might pray, okay, Lord, whatever your will is. Right, uh, that's something that we can pray. Uh, but to pray with surety and to pray with faith, you know, it's it'll be difficult, Lord. You know, as I go to, you know, uh, destination A, or as I take this decision A, sometimes we do not know. Okay, so here it says that the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. We we do not know what we should for as we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, okay? And talks about he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is and he makes intercession for us, okay? And is that perfect prayer according to the will of God. So, so that's the beautiful thing, that the Holy Spirit prays that pray, perfect prayer according to the will of God, according to the mind of Christ, um, for over over our lives, 
right, over our life situations, uh, when we don't know what we should pray for, maybe there are certain weaknesses in our lives that we are not even aware of, those hidden things. And so we might not even pray about those things, right? But the Holy Spirit prays that, prays according to the will of God, will of the Father, and prays the will of the Father into our lives, right? So how does that here, uh, interesting, you know, he talks about uh, how he pr prays with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there are groanings which cannot be uttered, meaning it says uh, that that uh, with Greek uttered, meaning it, can, it cannot be um, uttered into articulate speech. Right? These are groanings. And this ties in with 1 Corinthians 14. Right? 1 Corinthians 14, we read about um, praying in the Spirit or praying in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, and several verses there. Uh, let's look at uh, verse 2. It says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understand his, understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Okay, In the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Uh, verse, um, uh, verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Right? We are going to look at that whole thing of praying in tongues later. Uh, but we're just going to touch upon the saying that the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. And he helps us to pray with groanings, which cannot be uttered into articulate speech. And when the Holy Spirit helps us to pray, it's, it's you know praying with the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. These are some phrases that I use for praying in tongues. Right? And uh, and when when we do that, right? when, when we pray, in line with the spirit, then um, we are edified. We can also, uh, you know, we receive the mysteries of God, right? And all these things happen when we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. He helps us in our weaknesses, right? Some things might be very hidden, some things we might not be aware of, um, and we might not even pray, you know, maybe like uh, some anger issues, okay, we don't even think it's a big thing, or something to do with lust, and you, you know, thinking like, okay, it's it's a problem everybody has, and, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not even going to pray about it, but when we spend extended times praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit prays what our need is, and what our weaknesses are, and He prays that prayer, and sometimes we, and, and you know, most times we are not even aware unless there's a revelation. We are not even aware. But the fruit of it is seen, right? The fruit of it is seen when he leads us in victory over these areas, when those those weaknesses are dealt with, right? Um, so prayer in the Spirit. Okay, prayer mot motivated out of love of the Spirit. Okay, um, let's look at... Uh, Romans 15 and verse 30. Um, I, now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. You know, he, now Paul has these prayer requests. Um, and he says, um, you know, he, he really entreats them. He says, you know, I beg you, brethren, through the uh, Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me, that you work together with me, that you labor together with me in prayers for these needs. Right? Prayers to God. Um, so something that is uh, motivated out of love of the Spirit. Love of the Spirit. Prayer again. Right? Um, Ephesians 2, 18, how we have access to the Father through the Spirit. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. For through Him we have access. We both have access. He's talking about uh, the Jews, uh, the non Jews. For through Him we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. So we 
we have access by one spirit to the Father, right? Uh, okay, so these references are there in your notes, okay? Uh, I'm on page 18, if you're following in the notes, page 18, right? Um, thank you, Divya, for putting the scripture there, right? Um, so Ephesians 2a, for through him, we both have access. Through Christ, we both have access. Through the work of Christ, we both have access to, by the spirit, by one spirit, to the Father, right? Uh, so access to God, by the Holy Spirit, well, He He leads us. He um, uh, He leads us to the Father. He draws us to the Father, right? Um, in the same uh, book, when we turn to the last chapter, we see that um, there is a weapon, and that is called the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians six which talks about uh, uh, 10 onwards, talks about the armor of God, uh, different weapons, weapons of offense and def defense, and these are used uh, in spiritual warfare, right? And it says that, um, the, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And interesting to see that uh, um, that word rhema, is used there, okay? The word of God, Rama, a word that is quickened by the Holy Spirit, that is uh, stirred up or, or brought to our awareness by the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, it could be a portion of Scripture, it could be a verse, it could be uh, you know as understanding of it, a certain knowing that you receive in your spirit about you know about the word, a certain Scripture. So it is. Um, that which has been quickened by the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, the, the rhema of God, the word of God. What is the rhema of God? And when the rhema of God has been given to us, what is it used as? What is it employed as? It's used as a sword, as a weapon. And it's the sword of the Spirit. Sword of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, a weapon that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit. And what is it? What does it look like? It's the quickened word of God, right? So the quickened word of God, don't take it for granted or don't treat it lightly because it is a weapon, right? It is a sword which cuts down the work of the enemy and right? which pierces the darkness of the enemy, right? So it's, it's a weapon. It's called the sword of the spirit, right? Okay. Okay, I think we'll... Uh, We'll just look at one more thing and then uh, we'll take a break. And the next verse talks about praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, you know, in the spirit, with the spirit, right? Um, so, so which means that as led by the spirit, of course, right? as led by the spirit of God, but specifically this, this usage or this, uh, you know, this, phrase in the spirit with the spirit refers to praying in tongues it refers to praying in tongues so praying in the spirit or praying with the spirit so um so he says here that, that you pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints so um, as a as an armor, this is also prayer is also listed as one, and we see that prayer as led by the spirit, prayer in the spirit, and it is uh, specifically specifically referring to praying in tongues. Okay, okay. So let's um, we'll take a break and we'll uh, come back in ten minutes.